a, a far-reaching uh, uh, conversation with regards to the various uh, theaters in the world where there are interests of the United States of uh, real significance. Uh, we discussed those areas and uh, uh, exchanged our, our, our views on those topics. Uh, very uh, uh, thorough and in-depth discussion uh, in the time we had and uh, appreciate the chance to speak with the president-elect uh, and, uh, and look forward to uh, the, the coming administration. And Scenes from Earth 2. That was Mitt Romney after his meeting with Donald Trump, sounding an awful like, like someone who's considering taking a role in President-elect Trump's new administration. So is this the real deal or is it a head fake? Here with me to discuss it all is Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California, the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, and former House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers. Also with us, CNN political commentator Bakari Sellers and Republican Congresswoman Diane Black of Tennessee. Great to have all of you here. Thanks for being here. Is this the real deal? Is Mitt Romney really being considered to be Secretary of State? I think so. I think, you, listen, Donald Trump is not going to take the time to bring someone up uh, to do that interview process. That's what we've learned over, certainly over the last eight days or so. Uh, if he's not at least under serious consideration. And I think that's great. Uh, this is kind of that team of rivals that I think can make for really good government. He's trying to find the right people that fit with uh, the direction he wants to go. I think Mitt Romney would be great in that role. I mean, you fought Mitt Romney bitterly when he was running for president, but I sense in this new world you might like Mitt Romney at the State Department. Am I wrong? In this new world, I would love Mitt Romney at the State <laughs> Department. I, I, I think he would be a consummate diplomat. Uh, I think he could come up to speed on foreign policy issues. But I think it's a total head fake. I think this is Donald Trump still being the entertainer, still uh, running a show where he wants to build suspense. Uh, he alone knows who the contestant will will be the winner. Uh, and I think uh, that's more of a, a nod to give the appearance of bringing people together. But I'll be very surprised if he chooses Romney. So, Congresswoman, let me ask you. Mitt Romney and Donald Trump have very different positions on, for example, Russia. Romney has been very outspoken. In fact, he was ridiculed by Democrats, and he turned out to have been correct when he said that Russia was our number one geopolitical foe back in 2012. Uh, to say the least, President-elect Trump has a different take on Putin and Russia. Can people who disagree so much on issues having to do with the job, like Secretary of State, can they work together? I think I'm going to listen to what President-elect Trump has said, is that he wants all voices, and he wants to bring America together. And I think we ought to applaud the fact that he's bringing in people that maybe he had a different opinion, um, but he is wanting that to come to his administration. And I think, as Mike Rogers says, it's very smart, just like Lincoln did in the team of rivals, and I applaud that. Uh, like Mike, I don't think he's going to bring someone to Trump Tower and spend an hour and a half with him if he doesn't have a serious consideration of bringing him into the fold of the difference of opinion. Well, Bakari, so your home state governor, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, also uh, made a tr uh, trip to Trump Tower. Um, and we were also told that she might be considered for Secretary of State. Um, do you think that she's being considered for something? Well, I, I would think so. Uh, eight years ago, Nikki Haley and I were sitting at desks beside each other talking about issues that were near and dear to the hearts of South Carolinians. We weren't talking about nearly the issues that would affect someone as being uh, Secretary of State or anything of that nature. And experience is a question. Um, but what we've seen in the cabinet choices so far, outside of, uh, outside of Chief of Staff Priebus, but you've had Steve Bannon, you've had Michael Flynn, you've had Jeff Sessions, you've had these very divisive figures. If he were to nominate or choose someone like a Mike Rogers or like a Nikki Haley, or like a Mitt Romney, then I think that people could actually take what Congressman Black was saying to heart, that he's attempting to bring this country together. One thing I can say about Nikki Haley is we're going to disagree about policy from here until the end of time, but she's at least a statesman. Um, there have been three appointments that Donald Trump has made which have proven to be nothing but divisive in this country. And again, I'll reiterate those names. It's Bannon, it's Flynn, it's Sessions. You cannot sit here and, and say wholeheartedly that you want to bring the country together, but then nominate those three. Let's talk about uh, Mike Flynn. Uh, here is the general uh, speaking about Islam. Uh, he's made some controversial comments, some would say bigoted, about the religion. Take a listen. Islam is a political ideology. It is a political ideology. It, it definitely hides behind this, I, this notion of it being a religion. It's like cancer. I've gone through cancer in my own life. Okay, so it's like cancer, and it's and it's like a it's like a malignant cancer though in this case it has metastasized. A lot of the reasons, and you know this uh, from your days with the FBI and also on the House Intelligence Committee, a lot of the reasons why uh, people in the Bush administration and the Obama administration say don't talk that way about religion, not only because it's not true, is because it 
emboldens enemy and gives them uh, propaganda material. What do you think when you hear that? Well, two parts of that. I wasn't sure the first part because there are a group of scholars that believe ISIS and those like ISIS are using the political uh, context for Islam to do what they do, including beheadings and other things, which is entirely sure. wrong. The other part of that is we do need our Arab partners. We need our uh, Sunni Arab partners. We need Shia Arab partners to help get a handle on this extremism in Islam. Uh, they're the ones that are going to help us do it. Leaders like El Sisi of Egypt who have come out and said we, we need to have a reformation in Islam to, to try to fix this problem. So there's a combination of this. I, I would be careful. I, I believe he was talking about ISIS. I don't know that for a fact. If he was, there's lots of scholarly uh, research and development on the fact that that's what they believe. Those ISIS who are outliers in the, in the religion of Islam believe that that's true. Now we just need to make sure that all of the other, are, are, as I said, our Muslim partners in the United States and overseas, that we can band together and come together to make sure that we all to, uh, can defeat what is this group of people who are pretty vicious and believe it's a political system uh, in their own right. And Congressman, uh, defenders of Flynn say, look, there is a problem in Islam. Obviously, 1.6 billion Muslims are not the problem, but there is a problem in Islam. Uh, why is taking that on a problem? Taking on uh, al-Qaeda and ISIS and those who would pervert the faith of Islam is not a problem, but what Flynn does uh, is a tremendous problem because it plays right into the al-Qaeda and ISIS narrative that there's a clash of civilizations, that it's Islam against the West. That is deeply destructive. It's going to alienate our allies, uh, and it's just plain wrong. Uh, that clip demonstrates why a lot of people, I think, uh, throughout the IC had real problems with Flynn. He has a reputation for uh, saying things that are counterproductive, uh, being uh, hothead and divisive, qualities you don't want a national security advisor who's supposed to bring together the professionals in the National Security Council, the secretaries of state and defense, and reach decisions often under very challenging, time-constrained, uh, uh, important crises. That is not the kind of either personality or vision you want in that position. Let's turn to uh, the nomination of another individual, Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. He was nominated for a federal judgeship in 1986, uh, and Democrats in the Senate blocked the appointment. Here is what Senator, I guess he was then, U.S. Attorney uh, Sessions had to say back then, 1986. I am not a racist. I am not insensitive to blacks. I have supported civil rights activity in my state. There are instances that Sessions supporters turn to where he did enforce civil rights laws and he uh, fought segregation and he prosecuted the Klan. <laughs> well, he did his job by prosecuting the Klan, but let's talk about the fact that, one, Jeff Sessions is not a racist. I can flat out say that. That's fine. I don't really think that matters for this discussion. What does matter is his record. When you look at someone like Albert Turner, Albert Turner was actually there at the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. He was actually beaten. You look at Albert Turner, he actually carried the horse-drawn mule of Martin Luther King after he was assassinated. Do you know what Jeff Sessions did when he was a United States attorney? He prosecuted him for voter fraud, for registering black voters. That's a part of his record. Jeff Sessions says that you should not take the Confederate flag down off, st off state property. That's a part of his record. Jeff Sessions on the floor of the United States Senate said that, Dominican, that the immigrants from the Dominican Republic don't bring any talent or skills to the United States. That's a part of his record. So I love how Rents Priebus and other Republicans are now trying to rehabilitate his image, um, especially when it comes to civil rights and make him out to be some type of civil rights champion. But the fact is this, Jeff. When you talk about his record of desegregation, it's very thin. Let me tell you who Jeff Sessions is not. Jeff Sessions is not Ruby Bridges. Jeff Sessions is not uh, J.A. Delane. Jeff Sessions is not Thurgood Marshall. Jeff Sessions is not some champion for civil rights. He has a very, very troublesome record that makes most people who are vulnerable feel trepidation. Congresswoman? Listen, the Senate's going to have an opportunity to be able to fully vet him, and we'll see what they have to say. But I think, once again, there, there are pieces that people want to pick out and say, let's look at this and turn it and twist it. Let's give him an opportunity to have a full hearing in the Senate. Um, he's done some good things, as has already been said. Uh, with, with the segregation, he filed those lawsuits. Um, he has done a number of really good things, and I think that give him a chance to, uh, to, to be seen fully of what he has done.